Setting up a free IPA server is just incredibly easy. You just start with a fresh, minimal installation of Red Hat 7 or CentOS 7, assign a static IP address and a fully qualified domain name, install a few packages. If you're using integrated DNS, after you install those packages, then just change the DNS server setting, run a script, and then open the firewall ports. So when you're doing the operating system installation, when you get to the software selection screen, just choose minimal install. That's all you need. When you're setting up the networking, you see here we have a static IP address and we have our search domain. Down at the bottom, we have our fully qualified domain name in the host name box. For our DNS server, initially, we're going to just set it up to use our normal DNS server. That's because we need to be able to access the internet in order to install our packages. There are two ways to set up a free IPA server. If we're using integrated DNS, then we'll have to install two bind packages and the IPA server DNS package. Without integrated DNS, we won't install those th three packages and instead we'll just use an external DNS server which we'll set up ahead of time. If you're using the integrated DNS feature, you'll need to change the network configuration so that the server uses its own DNS service. And to do that, you just use the localhost IP address for the name server. So let's go ahead and take a look at how that works. So to change our DNS server configuration, we we'll just do sudo nmtui. And we'll edit our connection. And we'll just go down here to where it says DNS servers. And we're going to change this to the localhost address of 127.0.0.1. And then we'll go down and save that. And then we'll restart our network daemon. And now we should be able to look in our resolve.conf file and see that we have our proper DNS server, and we do. That's a good thing. Next up, we're going to run our installation script. Now, in large part, it's just a simple matter of accepting the defaults. Okay, so let's go ahead and start our installation script. And this is one of the few cases where we will not be accepting the defaults because we do want to configure integrated DNS. So we'll type yes. And here we can just accept the default for our server host name and accept the default for the domain name. And we'll accept the default for the Kerberos realm. And now we'll just go ahead and create a directory manager password. and an IPA admin password. And I will overwrite the existing bind configuration. And no, I do not want to configure DNS forwarders. And yes, I want to configure the reverse zone. And that default there looks good, so I'll just hit enter. And yes, I do want to configure the system with these values. And one of the curious things about this is that it is going to remove the crony D timekeeping daemon and just set it up with the old-fashioned 
NTP daemon instead. I don't know why, because Crony D is supposed to be more accurate. It's supposed to be better, but for some reason, the free IPA requires the old style NTP daemon. So it will automatically set that up for us as well. So we don't have to worry about that. And we can see there that it is going to take a little while. So we'll just wait and we'll come back when it's done. One thing to note here is that it's now setting up the Kerberos container. And so it's trying to make up some new encryption keys for it. But you see the warning here. It says a system is running out of entropy, so we may experience long delays. So what I'm going to do to try to speed things up, I'm going to do a Control-Alt Function Key 2 to get it out to another login window. And I'm just going to do some things to make some entropy, like uh, maybe just causing some disk activity or just randomly typing things. And that will help our entropy somewhat and will speed things up. And I'm just going to go up out to the original window now. I'll do a control alt function key one. And it appears to have helped. And now we see that our setup is complete. And our next step will be to open up the firewall ports. We'll take a look at that in the next video. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.